Well, apparently I spoke too soon. I guess I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, but thanks to leakers out there, we now aren't even sure if iPhones are coming at a September event. How bizarre does that sound? So, you guys obviously watch me for some reason. I've yet to figure out what that reason is, but it's not for my flawless track record, because for years and years and years, I've been predicting and calling things that don't end up happening. Occasionally, I get something right, but it's it's rare. I'll give you that. The latest reports going around are claiming that this Apple event, which is in less than a week and is taking place mid-September, is literally just for Apple Watches and iPads. And there won't be any new iPhones until October. <sighs> Let's begin. Alright, let me put my foot down on this one, okay? I know this could age horribly, I'm used to that. You know what, I've been making videos that age like milk for years, and it seems to work out fine so far. So I'm gonna put my foot down and say, I don't believe these leaks. I don't care how reputable the track records are, I don't care how much they've gotten right in the past, it doesn't make sense. And I think that's how most of you should come to a conclusion on whether or not you believe a leaker, because I think when it makes sense to believe a leaker is when they have decent track records on things like this, and they're leaking something that makes sense for Apple to do. So even if someone has not so great a track record but predicts something that sounds believable, sometimes I'll believe them. And also in times like today, a somewhat credible leaker will give some information that makes absolutely zero sense, and that's when I typically start to express my doubt. What I've noticed about these reports going on that makes everyone think, well, every single news agency I'm looking at is telling me there's no new iPhones next week, is that it's all stemming from the same source, honestly. It's not like a multiple group of sources all agreeing on one thing. It's pretty much just Mark Gurman with Bloomberg suggesting that this event is not for the iPhones and they're gonna have another October event just for the iPhones, but this one that we're getting next week is primarily just about the Apple Watch and the iPad. Okay? Now at first glance, if you're just scrolling through the news and you read that as a headline, you go, oh, makes sense, iPhones aren't ready yet, don't, uh, expect the new iPhones, okay, it's just for watches in the iPad. But if you're a nerd like me, that knows all the nitty gritty details of these announcements and what to expect with next generation products, you'll understand that that report makes no sense. None of it makes sense to me. For one, the Apple Watch Series 5, which had an always-on display, it was the first watch with an LTPO display panel, that took five minutes for Apple to announce and talk about on stage. Literally, you can go back on the keynote, look at how long it took them to talk about on stage. It's not a flagship thing. It's not something to build a whole event around, especially when Apple is known for doing so many site refreshes these days, right? Like, the Apple Watch Series 6 is rumored to just have like an updated silicon chip on the inside and perhaps some blood oxygen level sensor. So like a health feature and maybe a bigger battery life because there's no force touch anymore, all right? I don't see that as taking up 10, or even 15 minutes of stage time. And when it comes to the iPads, these are also somewhat minor. I mean, the budget iPad 8 is just getting a new CPU, okay? Same exact design, no changes at all to the exterior. It's literally just, it has an A10 chip now, but after this, it'll have an A12 chip, all right? That hardly warrants any stage time at all. And then when it comes to the iPad Air 4, I've seen a lot of people make the argument, but well, this is a new design. This iPad is gonna be really, really big deal. But the truth is, it's pretty much just a redesigned version of the 11 inch iPad Pro, same display, same form factor, it's got the same smart connector, it's got Apple Pencil 2 support, so unless Apple wants to reintroduce the Magic Keyboard, reintroduce the Apple Pencil into the iPad Air, and talk a little bit about the redesigned Touch ID sensor on the side, again, we're talking maybe 10 minutes of stage time out of just the iPad Air 4. There's not really any never-before-seen technology, again, aside from the Touch ID power button, but Touch ID in the power button is not something I think Apple wants to brag that much about. Out. If anything, that's definitely a step down from Face ID that just improves on affordability, but I don't imagine Apple talking much about how, so this is much worse than Face ID, but it allows us to save money in production, and that's why we're doing it. There's not much to talk about there. It's like, and it has Touch ID, which you can use for Apple Pay. Okay, next slide. All the things that Bloomberg is saying is going to be the entire event are insanely, incredibly minor details that, may I add, just a few days ago, we were all convinced would be site refresh. That's the other confusing thing about this. Leakers are all claiming right now that they know what the next Apple event is going to have, and it's not going to be new iPhones, even though they didn't know this event existed, like, an hour before the event took place. Sure, there were people suggesting that this week Apple was going to announce when the event was, but no one was predicting when it was going to be. No one wanted to put their name or credibility on September 15th. All of them were saying, well, maybe late September or maybe sometime in October we'll get some, you know, announcement of when the event is, but literally no one brought up 
when it could be and apple knew this all along they set the date and leakers didn't even have a clue they weren't able to predict it and it was right in front of their faces there was literally an apple event a week away and no one called it all right that's my point so if the leakers now are claiming well iphone's still not coming till october in my opinion it sort of starts to feel like they're just trying to cover their track record it honestly feels like well we reported that the iphone was going to come out in october and that's still true because this event is not for the iphone obviously these articles will age horribly if i end up being right which i probably won't but still even with a bunch of other minor stuff that people add to the list of saying well drew it'll be more than just a watch in the ipad even though that's all Bloomberg or articles want to talk about. Yeah, we, we got AirTags, we got AirPod Studio, we got Apple Silicon Max and that kind of thing. Again, all of which would not take up an insane amount of stage time and in my opinion wouldn't warrant an entire event. You know, Apple did the magic keyboard launch with the redesigned cursor user interface for the iPad. That was a site refresh. The 16-inch MacBook Pro was also a site refresh despite all of the changes they brought to that model. And also AirPods Pro with their new design, brand new wearables, active noise cancellation, force sensor, custom tips and all that all done via site refresh so why all of a sudden in September they would decide to have a whole event just for a bunch of little minor things doesn't seem like 2020 Apple in my opinion especially how they're hyping up the event with the augmented reality demo how you can tap on the image and look at it on your phone why would they hype that up if they're not planning on launching you know the iPhone with the lidar sensor and all that because lidar isn't coming to the iPad air it's not coming to the Apple watch so why all the augmented reality announcements I, I don't know but now we're hearing German say that we're going to have basically a bunch of mini events over the next few months where we have next week's Apple event just for the watch and the iPad which uh Again, that's gonna be like maybe 40 minutes. And then another event in October just for the iPhones, and then another event in November just for the Apple Silicon Mac, which he might be right about. I guess it'd be kind of nice to have lots of mini events with lots of videos for us to watch that Apple's producing. So on the other hand, I guess that's kind of exciting to know that there'd be lots of events that come out over the next few months, but it is very unlike Apple. And in my opinion, what leakers claim Apple is going to do and what Apple actually ends up doing always seem to not line up exactly right. There's still a bunch of stuff Apple always surprises us with and people get wrong every year. And frankly, hearing all of these different, no, this is how Apple's going to handle it. They're going to have three events and they're going to have one event just for the watch, even though Apple has always unveiled the new watch with the iPhones. So unveiling them at one event makes perfect sense to me. And they've only, only had September events for iPhones. So the idea of suddenly having a September event that's not for iPhones, just so that you can later have a October event for iPhones, but you wanted to announce Apple Silicon Max in September alongside watches and iPads. I don't know. In my opinion, it sounds like what the leakers are suggesting is Apple is going to do things they've never done before and break all kinds of tradition. And in my opinion, kind of clickbait their demographic a little bit. I think most people have come to expect that if Apple's having an event in September, that means we're getting iPhones. At least it's been that way for seven to eight years now. So to suddenly change up that formula just for the sake of, well, we should have a September event, but we don't want to talk about the iPhones because they're going to take a little bit longer to ship, even though they announced the iPhone 10 in September, even though it couldn't deliver until November. I don't understand why this is any different. My whole point here is that what I'm suggesting Apple is doing, which is just a huge big Apple event next week, where they talk about all the hardware for the rest of the year, that's more in line with what Apple has done and what Apple would do than what leakers are talking about, which requires them to do things they've never done before, which, again, they could be right. I completely acknowledge that. I'm not saying they're 100% wrong. Mark Gurman, Bloomberg, they've gotten a lot of things right in the past, but at the same time, Mark has also deleted tweets when proven wrong in the past, and also Bloomberg has reported on lots of stuff coming out that didn't end up happening, whether it be a mini HomePod or Apple bundling services in 2019. There's all kinds of stuff they've reported on that doesn't necessarily end up happening, and no leaker has a perfect track record. Not everyone is spotless, and I don't think just because if you saw CoinX tweet out something like, Apple is changing the name to Pear, and they're going to alter their logo, and they're going to make Jeff Goldblum the CEO. I don't believe just because CoinX has a perfect track record, you should instantly believe a tweet like that. And that's kind of the situation I'm in here now. It feels like leakers are talking about Apple doing all these random weird stuff that they've never done before, but the truth is, 
because they didn't even know this event was going to happen just a couple days ago. And this just seems like their best way of covering themselves for, uh, yeah, well, I was actually right originally. It's just, uh, this event isn't for the iPhone. So I guess we'll find out shortly. We just gotta be patient, but I will not be happily proven wrong this time. I'll be kind of sad if we go into this event still not knowing if iPhones are coming or not. And, and it turns out there's no iPhones. I think that will set the hype for everyone really, really high. And then everyone will just kind of be disappointed and underwhelmed. And I feel like Apple has to know that. Is there an advantage to hyping up an event like this and not unveiling the iPhones? If everyone in the public is assuming that iPhones are going to come out, then isn't that going to flatline the iPhone 11 series? Everyone's just going to stop buying iPhones for the next week. And that's of course going to hurt Apple's sales. And then for this event to take place and there's no new iPhones. So people are going to be like, oh, well, iPhones were supposed to come out, but they didn't. So I guess I'm not buying one now. For Apple, this would just be a great way to kill the sales of their current day products because everyone's expecting new ones to come out. So makes no sense to me that they would do this, but I don't have sources and I clearly have no clue what I'm talking about. But here you are still watching me anyway. Anywho, what do you think is going to happen next week? Feel free to let me know. This is your Apple simp here and I'll see you in the next one.